you may actually end up uncountable case also let's look into an example let's say this is my x axis and this is my y axis and i am interested in this region zero to one zero to one so just to think of a geographical location which is like a square area one in its square area which is represented by x and y coordinates okay now i'm interested in this square area this is my region and i'm interested in let's say some particular point here and my omega is all x y which are between 0 and 1 and also my second axiom said that probability of omega has to be 1 then only it's a proper probability function otherwise it's a not a probability function now let's look into this suppose let's say in this region x and y for any for any x y pair okay and that x y you gave a strictly positive number strictly positive number you assigned then if i am going to sum them over all of them and everybody is strictly positive huh? remember and those who know real analysis what does this mean p of x y is greater than 0 greater than 0 that what does this mean that means there exist there exist an epsilon positive such that p of x y is greater than are equals to epsilon right if pxy is greater than 0 there exists a positive epsilon such this has to happen if this is the case what is this number is sum is going to be what summation of p of xy or xy is going to be 1 will it be 1 see how many xy points are there infinity and to each point's probability is larger than epsilon. You are adding epsilon infinitely many times. Huh? Yeah, I mean, these are just all possible x, y's. If you want, you take it as an integration instead of summation. Do an integration, that is fine. But uh, if you want to do an integration of this px, y, where every point is greater than epsilon, what is this value is going to be? Is it 1? Can this be 1? Can this be finite? Can this summation be finite if if every point is greater than in uh, is going to be greater than epsilon here okay let's do simple math further so i so for, for time being don't worry that is a summation or integration we can do now if this is the case we know that this has to be greater than or equals to xy epsilon because every point here is greater than epsilon okay and now you are adding this or all x y so now this value is nothing but epsilon times cardinality of omega and what is cardinality of omega that is going to be infinite right because there are how many points x y are there which are between 0 and 1 grid it is uncountably many actually so this becomes that if you are going to do like this this becomes actually infinity the summation can't be 1. So, as you see that if this guy, all this term has to be 
if this guy has to be 1 that is if this value has to be finite many of the pxy has to be 0 if if they are not 0 then this you can't guarantee this p of omega to be equals to 1 ok so this means let's take now p of xy equals to 0 for many point I mean take all of them to be 0 if that is the case if you are going to add p of x y equals to 0 and add all of them you see that right hand side is 0 but uh, left hand side you want it to be 1 p of omega by axiom it should be 1 but now in this case if all p of x y equals to 0 you will adding infinitely many zeros is still 0 right so and you will end up with a contradiction so this extension of additivity from countable to uncountable does not extend just because of the fact that I mean many points in this space has to have a zero likelihood value they can't all have positive likelihood and this is just for your uh, reference much don't worry much about that I mean we, we are not going to use it it is just to uh, make it clear that the finite additivity why it is extended to countable but why not to uncountable in many terms ok fine so basically what we said is there are infinitely many points and none of them is 0 so the value if none of them is 0 yeah, if none of them is 0 the value cannot be finite the sum value cannot be finite but so like I can think of some a simpler case P of x is 1 by x. So, what is this example saying? So, suppose let us say is P of x is summation 1 by x is finite? Is finite? Summation 1 by x. Let us take it to be integer only, like here x is greater than or equal instead of that just take x to be integer so is this finite this is not ok let's take 1 upon x square ok this is finite ok you can make it a normal probability now what we are saying here here in this interval for every point you have assigned a positive number let us say this is a 1 by x uh, I mean infinity let us let us exclude the infinity part but open it interval infinity but everything else so this is fine every point has a mass I am not talking about that case here right I am talking about the case where uh, this axiom where probability of omega has to be 1 whether that is going to be satisfied or not and probability of 1 is omega is nothing but the uncountably many additions over all x y. So, in this case it could be 1 right? This could be 1 here in this case. But the values are uncountable, the x values 0 to infinity those values are uncountable mm -hmm. and each value has some finite mass right? It is not so finite mass here yes. So, both the cases are same with the condition right? The number of points are infinite and none of the points are 0. Mm -hmm. So, over there it is coming to be 1. So, how can we say that? So, this has to hold for anything, right? Not for a particular example. I mean, this when we are talking about axiom, this has to be generalized over all possible space. Okay. So, saying from in this example, if we conclude that some of the values have to be 0, hmm. this would be a wrong statement, right? In this case, countably many has to be 0. That's what I'm asking. How are we derived? How are we able to prove that, that it has to be zero? It could be possible all these values have some mass, but still add up to be a finite. That is true. That is possible. All of them can have some mass, but but now that is what I'm saying, right? Like this is what we need to think about. Let's take if every point is positive, then we are already saying that the summation can't be anything finite. It will be explored. 
this is what we are we are arguing here right that's what i am not able to understand <laughs> so let's say in your case 1 by x square right this is going to zero as x tends to infinity and even those points which are tending to zero are included in this okay so because of that you will not be able to find any epsilon positive and below which this value will not go that epsilon here is arbitrary in this case but where i mean what i am talking about is if everybody is positive with some fixed epsilon this condition is violated but the example you are giving is that epsilon itself is tending to zero okay so we have to somehow be careful when we are dealing with uncountably many points okay so that is why like i mean most of the arguments are going to make it for the finite case and wherever uh, it is easy to extend it to the countable uncountable case we'll do but otherwise we will not get to that for that's why like people have built nice sophisticated theories in terms of measures and all uh, i mean you, those things we'll study in advanced classes okay okay next how to interpret probability i talked about one thing like likelihood okay like uh, if you have a fair coin it is uh, the likelihood of head happening is same as tail so i will assign equal values to them that is based on your intuition but is there any other interpretation of these probabilities other interpretation so the one we talked about is based on description or preferences there other interpretation is called something called frequentist view okay so let me ask this question to understand uh, this frequentist view suppose let's say you have a coin a fair coin and you are going to throw it n times and out of this n times let's say you are going to see this many times heads and these many times tails and naturally n1 of n plus n2 of n has to be equals to small n this is the total number of tosses you have made out of which n1 is uh, now let's look into this n1 by n of n so what you are doing in this out of n trials you are trying to compute what fraction of the time out of this n outcomes what fraction of them are corresponding to heads right now what do you expect this value to go if i increase n to larger and larger number tends to tends to what 0.5 why is that you are understanding is if the coin is fair in the large number of tiles it must have happened equal number of i mean it should uh, its fraction should be almost half right so that is what like one could think probability as the fraction of the time it is going to happen when the experiment is done repeatedly and uh, repeatedly means you continue till infinity so the frequentist view is exactly that like i can define let's say p is the probability of heads how i can do this you toss the coin again and again and again and again and see you you throw it many times let's say 10000 times and see that out of that how many times it came head let's call that n1 of n we say right and you take that as your probability and this frequent test is is what is very handy okay let let's say suppose let's say uh, in uh, 
we have all these uh, drugs that have been come up, right? Which have been uh, went through various trials, and they said that uh, the efficacy of my drug is 86 percent, or my uh, efficacy of my drug is uh, 95 percent. What does that mean? How did they come up this number? It's not like uh, they just put its likelihoods on that. They have to come up with these numbers, right? How did they come up with this? Yeah. Observe data and put in sacrifice. Yeah. So, like uh, they would have asked many volunteers, like when you are uh, go for a drug, I mean, um, evaluation, you will ask volunteers or pay them to undergo trials. You collect a good number of people, you give this drug and see that on how many this drug is effective. And then you take that on how many it is effective divided by the total number of people you administer this drug that can be taken as your probability of that effectiveness of your drug or curing that. And that is why it like whenever you have data mostly you are going to go with this uh, frequency test view. And when you are actually not dealing with data like you have to just simply model some, some probabilities, some, some probabilistic phenomena and you have just a belief about some probabilities then maybe you just to go and put these beliefs and try to see how things are okay 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 now we are going to deal with three things as i said there's an underlying probability model we are going to observe that probability model through the through which the data is generated and we want to see that can we imitate that underlying probability model so that we can also generate the data in the same way that guy is generating if we could do that then basically we have understood that uh, that system right we are basically able to uh, like uh, see what potentially it could have done and infer and that is why the, the role of the probability statistics and data comes into picture and that is what is now called it as a data science the interplay between these two so what happens in a, how they are used so probability and statistics these two things they kind of provide us a framework to understand the underlying phenomena and then make what we call it as consistent inference and also consistent reasoning and predict and make so how is that okay let's talk about some some real world problem Let, let's say this could be like a weather and in the weather i am interested in predicting whether it is going to rain tomorrow or not okay i'm interested in that so if i know that how the weather affects like how the rain comes based on what factors everything then i kind of myself build a probability model and then predict whether the rain is going to come based on that but weather is very complex like i can't simply understand uh, everything like uh, based on which some weather phenomena happens so what we actually do is this is a real world weather but we try to model it according to some probability model this is our model so this is reality this is our thing model is ours the reality is the real world problem so now what we are trying to do is we are trying to understand this real world problem using some probability model and when we try to build some probability model, I will say that this will come with some parameters. Probability, when we are going to do models, the models will come with some associated parameters. Now, just assume that real world problem is also another probability, but it is going to use some particular parameters and I do not know those parameters. If I know those parameters, maybe my real world model is as good as uh, my, my probability model is uh, as good as the real world model. 
it is just that maybe I don't know those particular parameters that is using. But then what is good is I can get the data from this real world problem, right? Like whether I observe whether it is going to rain tomorrow or not. And I have like that I have in the I have recorded whether it rained or not in the past 10 years on particular each of these days. So I have this data. I can use this data, try to do the inference. What could be the pro possible parameters that are going to explain this data? And how to effectively identify and estimate those parameters? All these things, this statistics is going to tell me how to do that. And once this use those parameters, you go back and use them in your probability model. And see that what your probability model, this is your built model is going to tell like whether it is going to rain or not. Then you actually observe what happened. And then you know that whether what you predicted and what data set they are same or not. If same good, if not you know that you made a mistake. Your, prob your probability model is not good enough, it needs to be improved. Okay, so you take that and you use the again further statistics method to improve the parameters and go back and improve your probability model. You try to continuously try to do this so that your probability model tries to give as good as predictions where your predictions are, you are making lesser and lesser errors in your prediction. That means you have tried to understand the real world problems and your probability model is trying to capture that well. So this is the interplay between all the things and uh, I mean if you just uh, think of the, the forecasting, weather forecasting, this is exactly happening. And people have built, they have been collecting this data by putting sensors at various places and based on that they estimate the parameters and use that parameters to use in certain probability models based on that they predict whether it is going to what the weather is going to be. And then they will see that what actually happened get a new data and for that they will try to improve the parameters and this continues. Okay? So that is why it is very important that we understand probability models and see how to use the data to make inference and get a good parameters for them and improve this probability model so that they capture the real world problems well. Okay. I think we already exceeded time, we will stop here.